Um, so this is on page four in your packet, and what we're going to do is go over this last example, um, and then you will do the pages uh, six through ten on your own. And so they're just they're kind of uh, going to allow you to do that. So this is going to follow like the problems that we had done when we played the game. And so let's go ahead and do this together. Here we go. So the alpha fetal protein test is given to pregnant mothers. Abnormally high levels may indicate Down syndrome for the baby. If the test is done during the 15th week of pregnancy, the average micrograms of alpha fetal protein should be 40 micrograms. So that then we're going to have the null hypothesis and the alternative and all those kinds of things. On the assignment that you are going to do, I actually wrote out the parameter for you, but on this one, let's do this together. What is mu, this is average, mu stands for average, what does average uh, represent in this problem? What are we testing for? The average what? Micrograms, okay. So the average micrograms of what? Good, alpha fetoprotein, alpha fetoprotein. All right, so what would the null hypothesis be? Mu uh, equals 40 micrograms. Okay, now, in context, you know, what is that really saying about the baby if during the 15th week the average shown is 40 micrograms? What about the baby? The baby is okay and doesn't have Down syndrome. So this is important. I want you to do this when you do your assignment because this will very much help you when you go do these other problems. So along, when you're doing these, kind of put in context what this means. So the baby is okay, you know, no Down syndrome. Okay, what's the alternative hypothesis? Mu is greater than 40 micrograms, and it's because it says if there is an abnormally high amount of alpha feta protein, then that may indicate Down syndrome for the baby. So if we say the alternative is true, what does that mean? That the baby's not okay. The baby may have Down syndrome. Okay, so let's go then with the type 1 error. And I think I have a format that's going to make it simple for you guys. We're first going to put, um, you know, the reality and then what the sample makes us think. If we list that on all of these, that'll, on those ones where we define stuff. So the reality is for a type 1 error, what, is, what does it mean? Nope. HO is true if the null is really true, but we get a sample that causes us to reject the null and make us think that what? It makes us think HA is true. Okay, so that's the basics. Now let's kind of write down what's going on. So the reality is, the reality is baby is okay. But we think, we got a sample that made us reject that and makes us think that the baby, what? Yep, that the baby has Down syndrome. Okay, do you see how if I do this top part, it makes this neck, all the next of it, like, so easy. If you do this top section... Right here, if you take the time and you do this, it makes everything else just like super boom easy. Okay, so let's go ahead now and do the consequence. Okay, so what would be a consequence of the baby actually being okay, but you go tell the mama that the baby has Down syndrome? 
Okay, good. So the mother freaks out. You know, uh, like extreme, extreme situation, what might happen? Yeah, maybe, you know, in a very horrible, horrible, horrible case, the mom thinks that she doesn't want the baby anymore, and so, you know, she goes through the adoption process or the abortion process. Um, you know what? Whenever I was pregnant, we didn't do this test because there's a high rate of um, type 1 error. I mean, this is for real truth. There's a high rate of this, and we were we knew from the start we wouldn't abort the baby or get rid of the baby or anything like that. So, you know, why worry yourself? So... Exactly. So there's a high rate of um, this that happens, um, type 1 error. Okay. Next. Okay, listen up. Define a type 2 error. So let's first write. So for every problem that you define, you're going to put what really is happening and then what the sample makes you think is happening. So for a type 2 error, type 2 H A is true. H A is true, but we end up getting a sample that makes us think. Our sample makes we fail to reject a false null hypothesis. So we we think that H O is still true. Okay. So the reality is, the reality is. That the baby has Down syndrome. Okay, but the sample makes us think that what? That the baby is okay. The null hypothesis is that the baby is okay. So the reality is the baby has Down syndrome, but we got a sample that was unusual and it made us think that the baby is okay. So what might be a consequence of that? Okay, good. So baby doesn't get proper care or the parents don't prepare themselves mentally or whatever. Um, baby doesn't get um, proper pre-care. I don't know. You know, the parents don't, they're not aware of the situation and don't mentally prepare themselves and take care of educating themselves of how to care for this type of baby and so on, all those different kinds of things. Okay. So here's my recommendation. In summary, here's what I want you to do uh, when you do your assignment. You ready? You're going to go do the assignment, and you. this part is done for you. I go ahead and I define that for you. I want you, of course, you're going to do the null hypothesis. I want you to make sure that you do the, in real life, what does this mean? If you do the, in real life, what does it mean, it makes the other parts just fall right out. And then... Make sure this is written on every single problem, that the ones where you define. Pretty, yeah, if you write this, it will make it easier. I think, you know, there's different ways you could think about it. So over here on the board, I put HO is false, but I put in parentheses HA is true. I think... It, to keep stuff straight in our brain, I think it actually would make it, we, I think we're going to do better if we think the reality is HA is true, but we think the other one is true. So let's, let's review, let's get this memorized. Okay, you ready? On type one, which one is the real true? HO is the real true, but we think HA is true. Okay. On type two, which one is the reality true? The second one, HA is true. Okay, so type 1, the reality is HO is true. Yeah, type 2, the reality is HA is true. I think if you, I think that's going to organize it for you. Let me say it one more time. Everybody, let's get this thoughts organized one last time. For a type 1 error, 
The reality is the HO is true. HO, type 1, HO is true. Type 1, HO is two, true. Type 2, the HA is true. Type 2, the HA is true. Okay, and then you know the others that way. Okay, I will keep this up here. And so then your assignment is, let's take a look. Um, if you take a look over here, see this starts on page 6. Is it page 6? Yes. Um, do you see how I... I guess I skipped a, do you see how I wrote out the p-value or the what the parameter is for you? So that helps you with the understanding of what's going on with the problem, okay? You're still going to have to read the problem, but I do help you with defining that, all right? So okay. on that one, yes. say of all the companies up there that are hiring minorities, This is the this is the, the this is the P yeah the that's the null hypothesis. hypothesis yeah, and this is the sample they got, and so they're wondering if it's much lower. Okay, I will leave this up here for you guys, and you work on pages six or ten. I'll walk around helping you all class.